What do you think of this place? Oh my God. I was just thinking to myself, I'm glad I like to live in a clean space because I don't want to mess this place up. Look, Look at this white sweater. I could, I could <laughs> handle that for about five minutes. Tell me about your galley here. I love this galley. I can spread out with cleaning things, with prepping things, turn around and cook things. If I needed more prep space over here, I've got it. There's so much great storage. I won't show you everything today. It's a little messy, <laughs> but there's tons of storage. I got my dry goods over there and I've got my pots and pans and all the dishes right at hand. dedicated freezer with all these different shelves so you can keep things really organized two refrigerators look at this stove's really easy to use and this one's got fiddles if it's rough out we can still cook got a nice oven down here everything you need this is my favorite space King size bed, plenty of room for both of us, lots of storage along the side, and we have blackout shades. We can make this room completely dark, especially when we close the door. And then I've got all my clothes and my shoes right here. There's even a chair in here. I like this for shaving my legs. You gonna give us a demo? <laughs> I need to. Tons of storage. Down below as well. I'm gonna show you my favorite feature about this room. Plenty of room for me to do yoga. Check this out. Just do my little daily practice. Little downward dog. Woo! And I plan to keep my yoga practice up underway as we cross the Atlantic using the dagger boards and this closet. Check this out. I can do my balance poses right here. See if I go, oh, oh. <laughs> I can still do it. <laughs> All right, this is not sorted out yet, but this is uh, the camera corner. <laughs> There's so many lenses and drones and batteries, and I, like I don't it. want to call the port side the embarrassment, but let's just call it the storage side for now because we don't really need any more space. Yes. An another king bed. Another king bed. So <laughs> guests are going to be very happy. Yeah. There's actually two berths on this side. They share a head and shower. So the shower and wash basin are separate from the toilet and wash basin. Um, they're all, they're both really big. And then up forward, I would say this is like a double to a double to a queen, something like that. And we haven't completely moved in yet. Comfort is awesome, of course, but this is a serious sailing machine. That is what you'd call a full set of sails. She does not have the carbon longeron option, which would extend the bowsprit a couple feet. But you can have three head sails ready to go. There's a furler for the code D, a Genoa on roller furling, and a staysail that's hanked on. You can control the height of the tack for the code sail or the staysail and you can also control the luff tension because both those lines come back to a winch. Very handy. Nothing particularly interesting about the ground tackle on this boat, but there is a channel that allows you to wash the mud off from the deck washdown system. The stay sail is self-tacking and then the Genoa sheet leads are fixed on the coach roof. 
You'd pretty much expect it on a boat like this, but it's got a carbon fiber mast from Lorima and an aluminum boom. Kind of interesting, a lot of performance boats have aluminum booms these days. Some serious hardware here at the mast base. There are clutches on the mast for the halyards as well as back near the helms. That helps to save wear and tear on very expensive lines. Kind of an aside, but I've always appreciated forward hatches that open a thwartship. It just makes more sense. There's a lot of real estate on this coach roof. 1250 watts of walkable panels. Looks like there's room for more. And then you've got glass panels in back. In my experience, you really have to get your solar up to at least 2,500 watts or so to be pretty much independent of charging on the engines or genset. I don't know, does it go without saying that on a boat like this, all the lines would be led aft to the helms? Well, that's the case here. We'll start on the sunny side. Both helms have two powered primary winches. These are the Genoa sheets. We've got a halyard for the code D and a spinnaker halyard, which is two to one. There's also a staysail halyard. The yellow line is the main sheet and that's controllable from either side of the boat. A few more strings to pull, including those for the dagger boards, tack lines for the spinnaker and the furler for the code sail. And I think this is pretty genius. They run those lines to double turning blocks that go back up to the two primary winches, saving a lot of real estate and keeping things versatile. It's really cool. And that there is the kill switch, and that'll depower all the electric winches. This helm design is what made me fall in love with the Uchimer 52, and the Uchimer 55 has two of them, one on each side of the boat. It's just super versatile throttles and autopilot right at the pedestal. With the Jeff steering, you can bring that helm right out to the chase lounge. Or if you're tired of the sun and spray, you take that helm down into the cockpit. I forgot to get the shot, but from here you can see right through to the front of the boat. Pretty much the same setup on the port side, but this side controls different aspects of the rig. With one exception, all these ropes and clutches here are for controlling the mainsail. That's the topping lift. There's the main halyard. That's the sheet for the self-tacker. There's the main sheet ready to go. And here are the reef out hauls. One, two, and third reef. There's the port dagger board control, and then the yellow line is the furling line for the Genoa. Same Antal turning blocks as the other side, and you can lead that furling line across the cockpit if you're single-handing. All right, this is something that any experienced large catamaran owner will really appreciate. Yeah, it's a line driver. There are tremendous loads on the main sheet and the track, and being able to power it is just awesome. And yet with all this automation, you still have the chance to test your strength with a manual winch to raise the dinghy. It's a, it's a good thing to, to charge batteries because even the main switch is off, you can charge by solar. Speaking of automation, this boat is an elegant design, but it is much, much more complex, at least electrically, than what I'm used to. Where do we turn off the alarm? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the buzzer. Yes. It's very... As part of the handover process, we spent a lot of time with experts in plumbing, electrical, and electronics. This is the same as any new owner would get. But with what we've got planned for the boat, and in the time period we're gonna do it in, we've got a lot to learn, and fast. You ready for your first sail? Ever? I'm ready for my oh, first lesson. Not. Yeah. I'm feeling like it's all going to be good if we can just get out of the slip. <laughs> Mathieu, ever confident? Yeah. What's the problem? I know. Easy as pie. How yeah. scary getting out of the slip is. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
well. A actually, it's even easier when you are a bit tight because you are held between the two poles. Uh, when it's very wide, you can be sliding sideways, so you are, you are stuck between the, the poles. So, so it's it's to touch the poles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. are so absolutely thrilled to be able to share this experience through the videos but I'll tell you it's tough to divide our attention between photography and learning the boat with this beautiful Jenniker up we were effortlessly doing 10 knots but the Uchimer wow upwind it just goes This boat is so much more sensitive to trim than what I'm used to with our Leopard 46. I'm over trimmed here and I can see in the video just how much extra wash I've got coming off those rudders. The result is I've lost a couple knots of speed and the boat is healing a little more than it needs to be got a couple options. I can either let the sails out a bit more or I can head up into the wind. Well, first of all, I feel like a used balloon. I just feel kind of like I had so much adrenaline pumping for so long that now I'm just like, ah, just kind of relaxed. But for me, the feeling is always the same. When we turn off the engines and the sails have gripped the wind, that feeling, it's the same on a dinghy, on all the boats that we've owned. And now to be able to sail this incredible, incredible machine 
I feel like I just received a huge download. <laughs> the first time sailing this boat. Wow, I've been waiting for this moment. There's a lot to process, but my overall feeling was like, oh my God, this is a rocket ship. The downwind code Z, code D sail with the orange glow sitting on the back seat. I was like, all right, let's just keep going. <laughs> let's not turn around. So I, I definitely got a taste for what's coming. And it was interesting to turn up wind and roll the jib out and realize, whoa, we're kind of healing. <laughs> I think we might have too much sail up. The layout of the controls, the sheets, the halyards, it all it all makes sense. I, I would say that there's a couple maneuvers that might be a challenge single-handed. I'm sure there's ways around it that we'll that we'll learn. But overall, I felt like, you know, this is a boat that we could definitely handle. It didn't seem like it was too much. Doesn't mean I don't have a lot to learn. I got a lot to learn, but that's part of the joy. So today was, it was lovely. Overall, it's an amazing feeling. I'm pumped. I can't wait to do it again soon in a couple days and practice more things like reefing and, you know, trying the staysail and all that. Matthew, how we do? Come on. How, how was it? You did, you did good. I think, uh, no, I think you will be comfortable very quickly. Uh, basics uh, are exactly the same. Uh, there's more load in the sails and the sheets than your previous boat. Uh, so you just need to be cautious with uh, controlling the, the, the loads. But uh, you did everything right and you will be, you will be 99% very quickly. I feel so taken care of with all these yeah. people on board. <laughs> right? <laughs> Double checking. Where's the massage? <laughs> <laughs> today was pretty wild. We had, I think, like, what, six, six technicians on here all day. The boat's already been through the Navage process. Uh, but they're just picking out all these little things that they want to correct before we get underway across the Atlantic. Really nothing major. So now I can increase. I'm used to I'm used to being in the engine room or bottom up, you know, upside down doing boat yoga fixing things and it's just really really weird to have multiple professional shipwright and engineer people aboard taking care of this stuff it's just it's really really odd i i feel like like i don't know what to do One of the goals that Utamer has is to get this boat to the Miami Boat Show, and that's in mid-February. So if the boat isn't ready to depart Le Grand Mott until, you know, the end of the first week in January, that's that doesn't give us a lot it of time. It gives us five weeks to go 6,200 miles. Yeah, so that's a long they're, ways. But they're also very much aware that weather is in charge here. Yes. And obviously they've got to do the things they have to do, the holiday, so, I think they're very realistic, mm. but they're aspirational and we're game for that. We like that. And um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Yeah.